Welcome to the Clutch Tech Support Clutch Installation Lab. I'm here at the demonstration bench and I've got a Ford Ranger clutch system, Ford Ranger hydraulic release system, and a Ford Ranger pedal assembly. But I modified the line. I put a T in here and a piece of high pressure clear tubing and a valve. And there's an air bubble in here. Now this air bubble, I can add or remove the air bubble from the hydraulic system just by opening and closing the valve. This is going to allow me to demonstrate just how critical it is that there is no air in the clutch hydraulic release system. And we're going to be able to measure it because we've got a precision dial indicator on the clutch showing it lifting off and releasing the disc. So let's take a look at just how critical that small air bubble is to a clutch hydraulic release system. Now this is the dial indicator and it's showing zero right now. The clutch is in the engaged position. This will record or show us plate lift. That's the distance that the pressure plate moves off the disc for release. So we're starting at zero. I'm going to push the clutch pedal down and this is without the air bubble. We're getting about 67 thousandths plate lift. That's more than necessary for a nice clean release and shift. So this clutch is releasing nicely. Now I'm going to add the air bubble. When I open the valve, this little air bubble up here is now active and incorporated into the system. Now let's see what happens to the pressure plate lift. 50 thousandths. But it feels spongy up here at the top. It's not responsive. I can feel I'm compressing an air bubble. So it goes down and then we start to lift closer to the bottom. This would probably cause gear grind. It would start to pull or engage right off the floorboard. Just that little bubble. And if the bubble was bigger, we'd get even less plate lift. Take the bubble out. We're back to our full, complete clutch release. Now with the valve open and the air bubble added, as I push down the clutch pedal, the bubble disappears. It's being compressed. So I bring the pedal up, the bubble is pulled back down. So this small bubble at the top of this line is all it took to completely change how this Ford Ranger felt. And if it would be a bigger bubble, boy, it'd be even spongier. Well, I think this demonstration shows you just how critical it is that we don't have any air in a clutch hydraulic release system. Any air bubble in this system, the pedal's going to feel spongy at the top. The clutch isn't going to release very well, if at all. The pedal's going to feel really different. So it's really, really important that these systems have no air in them whatsoever. We've got special tips and techniques for removing those air bubbles, and they vary by application and the design of the components you're working with. These are the two most common hydraulic disconnect couplings that were used on they started off with the Ford Rangers. The early system was the black, later on they used gold, and the dimensions are different. You cannot take this coupling and put it into this one, vice versa. You have to do it correctly. It's all catalog, so uh, if you're working on an older Ford pickup truck and it's not connecting, let's take a look at the colors of those fittings. Black to black, gold to gold. This is a kind of unique bleeding situation or bleed screw situation really. This is the concentric slave cylinder for a Saturn Ion, but there is no conventional bleed port. The clip is in the installed locking position. Notice the line has two O-rings on it. As you push it in, just push it into the first click. At the first click, the line is locked in and it actually is sealed from the line to the fitting, but the bleed port is now open. This allows you to proceed with your bleeding procedure. To lock the line in and close the bleed port, push the line in all the way. Now it's locked. To re-bleed, you would pull the clip back out, pull the line out a little bit, there. That's the bleeding position. Continue bleeding. Push it in for lock. So a lot of these systems are getting very creative with where they hide 
the bleed port. Believe me, we share the frustration when we hear your calls on tech support about getting a system to release. And a lot of times I might mention to the caller, take a look, see if you see any homemade parts. Anything that doesn't look like it was originally built with the truck, that's a cause for concern. And oftentimes the thinking is if it doesn't release, let's make the push rod longer. So here's a piece of bolt, it's threaded, and someone made a homemade longer push rod out of it. This will actually cause a problem later on as the clutch wears out normally. This will prevent the system from being able to wear out and use up the entire clutch. If you have any questions about a clutch hydraulic release system, a clutch, or a flywheel, please call our toll-free tech support hotline. Please check your vehicle's owner's manual for specifications on the correct fluid to use in your clutch hydraulic release system. Using the wrong fluid, such as power steering fluid, motor oil, transmission fluid, will damage the internal seals of your hydraulic system components.